Greetings, salutations, and all good things in between. What's up, everyone? Matt here. Time to answer another Patreon question. Got one from Henny. He asks, hey, Matt, I got a couple here. Uh, hope you can help. I build apps for mass participation events. I use QuickChart to create QR codes, and the QR code is then sent to participants prior to the event, to the event using WhatsApp, which I integrate with AppSheet. I have two questions. I'd like to send participants a more informative QR code, similar to what airlines do with their boarding passes. Create a JPEG with QR codes, logo, start time, blah, 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 blah. Uh, is there something else I could do? I guess PDF might work as well. Well, you kind of, you nailed it right there. That's exactly what I was going to suggest you do is you just, because the QR code's an image, right? So you could just take that and dump that inside of a template. In fact, I kind of came up with one that I could show you here real quick. Let me show you. Okay, so if I bring this guy over here, so like here's just a mock-up of something that you could do, right? And the idea is, you know, really kind of this uh, top page is kind of like a, this is what it could look like, and you know, um, to to mock this sort of thing up. You know, I even went inside here and I went to the the page setup and I selected one of the standard sizes they have in here is this statement thing, which is like. Um, it's really small. It's five and a half inches by eight and a half. So it it, it kind of, you know, it makes a nice looking little thing. And I think you can support this in the custom margins inside AppSheet because it's a standard size. Don't quote me on that. I haven't tried it yet. But that was just my, that's my thought. So anyways, right? So here's the idea. Yeah, you know, I've got like a title up at the top. I got a little table here with some info. Um, I have another table inside here. That's how I got the two images next to each other like this. Um, and I just made the, uh, the, uh, the line with nothing. So it goes away. Um, and then I've got another field down here for like, you know, some blah, 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 blah. And don't forget this type of stuff, right? Okay. So the way I would do this, if I was building a system like this, right? The way I do this is I'd go to quick chart, get my quick chart QR, uh, QR code, like code that I needed for what I wanted it to look like. Uh, and then bring that over into my app and parameterize whatever needed to be parameterized inside the thing. And then at that point, that image is basically an image, right? So yeah, it's a constructed URL, like the actual data inside the column itself is a URL that you're constructing with like a, you know, a concatenate or some, something of that nature. Um, but the column type is image, right? So for all intents and purposes, as far as app sheets concerned, it's an image and it will treat it as an image whenever it's like moving it about. Right. Um, so like you can just drop, the like inside of a template here, right? You can just replace the image with, if I've got this inside like a virtual column, right? Like, okay, so here's the template that I, that I used to originally set this up. So like, if I wanted to convert this into a template that I could use, this is what I would do. I come in here, select my title, right? And then change that to whatever the, name of the column is, right? And it's at this point that your template really starts looking like garbage and trash, but you just got to go with it because remember, it's going to eventually look like that. <laughs> so just go with it, right? And then like, I got the date here. So like this would be, if I can click, good Lord, this would be the date, right? And then this would be like start time. But now see now what I would want to do here is um, I'd probably want to do something like text and then time and then be like hour, minute, AM, AM, PM. And that needs to be in quotes. You know, I do something like this, not AP, AM, AM, PM. There we go. <laughs> Good Lord. Well, that closes off the text and close that, right? And then like, I'll just copy this. Oh yeah, and this like first part would be like open time, opening time. And then like, this would be closing 
time. All right? And then I just leave the all that little stuff that was in the middle, I'd just leave all that alone. And like this would be the address, right? I got a square bracket there, or the one. Like this, I just delete it. I'd come inside here, and then this would turn into like the event icon because this would be a column inside my table, right? This would be that virtual column. So again, just click on it, delete it, and then be like, yep, uh, okay, if I can type this and I need uh, event access QR code, right? Because I'm assuming that's the idea is that this QR code is their access pass. And then like, I just take all of this text, right? And we're gonna replace that with a um, another column. A reminder text, right? Boom. And now every bit of data, every bit of text, everything that was inside my template is now parameterized. And so as long as I've got you know, uh, as long as I've got a record that has details for all of these things, as long as the event icon is an image that's present inside the folder where the app is expecting it to be, as long as the QR code is an, is an actual image resulting quick chart URL, right? So like there's no error, so you're getting an error state. As long as it works, right? All of this will work. And then when you take your record for the event, and then shoot the shoot that record through this template, it comes out like this. So there's nothing to say that you couldn't do that, right? This is exactly what I would do. Um, and then what what you could what I what I would probably do then is I would generate this template um, with the idea being right. So you're generating a system for managing the event. Um, and maybe this is a system that manages multiple events That's where I would go with it. Uh, so I'd have like an event record, right? Uh, and then the idea I would do then is I would build this template and then I would also have a file column on that event table where then once I enter the details for the event, I can hit, you know, generate flyer, right? Or whatever. And then it takes this template and all that details makes that and saves this as a PDF, as an actual file inside the Google Drive and then drop and have an automation drop the file link inside the column for the, the event record. And so now I've got this flyer that I just made as a thing that I can click on inside my, my app. And since it's just a file, this is where it gets really fun you include that file, like the column name inside of an email, just kind of like I did right here, where I've got like the double carrot thing, the square bracket and the name of the column. Okay, if I have that file column and I drop that into an email, it becomes a clickable thing that people can click on and download the file or view it. You can attach that as an attachment, right? And so when I send somebody an email, I'm, th I'm speaking strictly through emails right now, uh, it'll be an attachment that someone can click on and download. Um, I'm, I don't know if you can send PDFs through WhatsApp, at least through the click, the click chat thing, you know, the, the quick integration where you can push information to somebody. Uh, I'm pretty sure you might be able to do it with, if you have like a true API integration in the back end. Um, not sure, you know, that'd be something I'd be curious to find out. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, his second question, if I can find it, there it is. Second question uh, is, I need to shorten long URLs. Currently, I use short.io, but it is very manual. Ideally, I'd like a long URL to be shortened within AppSheet. I need to use this for two reasons, to shorten the quick chart URL and to pre-fill jot form forms with participant data to, uh, and to get URLs, and those URLs get very long. Uh, yeah, on this one, so there's no, not really, um, I don't really have a good solution for you on this one, at least not within the AppSheet world. AppSheet does not have a URL shortening service. Uh, I'm sure like 
short.io, do they have an API? You might be able to find some way to where you could create a script where you could take whatever data from a record that you save, shoot that as a parameter to a script. The script takes those parameters, shoots it to the uh, short.io API. It does whatever it does and sends it back and you, your script catches it, does what it's supposed to do and dumps it inside the record. Um, you know, but it's a lot, right? <laughs> it's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, it's not not hard per se. Documentation and everything is all really well made, written out, and it all so you can figure it out. It's just there's a lot of steps and things to do. Um, my question, really, my really, really, my question becomes: uh, You're saying you're doing it for two reasons. You need to shorten the quick chart URL. Uh, okay, so I assume that that's because you're trying, to, you're sending the person the image, but when you're sending it, it's sending the actual quick chart URL. And so what happens is that the person has to click on the URL and then it opens to like a dedicated Chrome, uh, web browser where it's just the URL that that person clicked on, just the quick chart image. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm not so sure. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. That's a thing. Um, there's, of course, with AppSheet, you know, the the, the reason I'm so like, oh, no, don't really know where to go right now is because the, you know, as I say it all the time inside AppSheet, you know, there's f any four ways to do any one thing. Where are you going? Another way. Always another way. <laughs> Had to. Could resist. Uh, and so it's like, you know, at this point, you know, you're, you're encountering uh, a difficulty, of, um, you know, uh, um, I don't know, functionality problem. And there's a whole bunch of different ways that you could go about solving this, right? So like right now you're using WhatsApp to send everybody the, all of this information, you know, you, you could do that a different way. You could send everybody an email. That's usually my go-to is an email because usually people have an email that they'll use when they're signing up for something like this. Especially if we're talking about like, this is my access pass to some event that I wanna go to, right? There's probably an email involved. Uh, so it might just be easier to generate that file like I was talking about and just send them the file because then it's a file in their email and they can click on the file and it'll open the PDF and that QR code will be right there and it they'll be able to like zoom on the PDF because the PDF kind of renders like an image in a way, you know what I mean? Um, and the, uh, the other thing that you wrote down there is, uh, and the URLs get really long because you use it to pre-fill JOT forms, right? Um, with participant data and you know, I'm assuming that's like, hey, you know, you signed up for whatever, come here and fill in the rest of your stuff so that we can give you your final boarding pass or whatever. Um, not sure, right? So again, 4,000 ways to go about this and I generally, generally I'm usually trying to find ways that I could remove other services out of the mix. You know what I mean? Like right now you're paying for that jot form, I guarantee, right? And maybe there's a way that you could do this where you don't need to use jot form. Like you're probably using Google Sheets for your back end. Yes. Maybe connect your Google Sheet to a Google form and send people stuff that way. Um, perhaps there's something to be looked into with the new dynamic email feature, right? That you can do with, um, with emails. You can say certain things are dynamic and it presents those users a form. Granted, they got to be logged in. So you're trying to keep things public. But anyways, you see where I'm going with this. There's a lot of different avenues that you could go with trying to solve your problem with the long URL. 
Um, maybe instead of focusing on trying to solve the problem of my URLs are really long, maybe take a step back and think about, is there a different way that I could go about what I'm trying to do? Because there is a guarantee. It's just whether or not you want to invest the time and money and whatever to get to shift from your current system to something else. But the shift might be advantageous. You never know. Anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. I do appreciate it. If you like, if you like content like this, subscribe, like. I got big stuff coming in August. See you in the community, everybody.